Tucker Carlson is headed to prison. But it's not what you think. He's going to visit <laughs> Julian Assange in Belmarsh Prison in Britain. Julian Assange, obviously um, well known to our viewers as the founder of WikiLeaks and someone whose journalism uh, got him arrested and detained and has been in miserable conditions for years. So Tucker Carlson says on X, on Twitter, that he's there. He sh shares a photo. You can go look at that of, uh, of him visiting Julian Assange. So very interesting. Uh, obviously, Assange is. Um, cause has been one uh, for many people who just support free speech and anti-censorship on the right, on the left, uh, etc. His, his cause, however, has in, in some way attracted, I mean, still attracts a lot of support from the left, but has also drawn um, supporters like uh, Tucker Carlson, um, who, who I think believes very much that the journalism that Julian Assange did, revealing you know the, the lies and the spying and the abuses of the federal government was valuable and that, you know, be, I obviously can't speak for Tucker, but I suspect that's why he thinks highlighting this case um, is important. What do you think about this, Jessica? You know, I think maybe Julian Assange just has a story to tell about doing crack and sleeping with President Barack Obama. You know, <laughs> okay, just another one okay, of Tucker's okay. dedicated to following the story. He's going to get to the bottom of it. No, I think it's, it's right. good that Tucker's taken interest in Julian Assange, right? Yeah. I think it's good. Uh, that we have a figure on the right that wants to show that calling out the war crimes of the United States government, that making that known to the American people in the world was a good contribution to society as a whole. That's good that Tucker's audience knows that. What will we gain out of him going to prison? The drama of it all, of course. Uh, I'm not sure what Julian Assange will share that he hasn't shared with Tucker Carlson already, mm -hmm. uh, but we can speculate the many reasons. But I yeah, don't think he actually Yeah, highlighting the plight of it for, for the Tucker audience is, I think, very good. Especially because Tucker's base is so attached to this idea that perhaps Tucker left Fox News because of his coverage on Ukraine, that he's been incredibly anti-interventionist. The timing of this all, with the escalation of the war in the Middle East between Israel and Palestine is, Palestine is interesting. But Tucker Carlson taking this approach of being very anti-U.S. intervention in Ukraine and now talking with Julian Assange, it is following a pattern. Yeah, I, I do think there's this interesting question of how much you can read into Tucker Carlson's editorial choices, if you want to call them that, mm -hmm. in, into the, a broader uh, conservative movement. I mean, Glenn Greenwald is one of the most princ principled people in the country, perhaps the world, when it comes to these free speech issues. And he has been someone who has been doggedly advocating to free Assange. He's someone who has been very consistent on both the war in Ukraine uh, and the whatever you, the conflict in the Middle East, who has been covering these kind of issues with a really clear eyes for decades. But there has been, I think, a tension that's emerged over the last three weeks uh, since the Hamas attack on the 7th, where so much of the media landscape that purported to care a great deal about speech immediately flipped when it happened to be an issue that wasn't their issue. So you had people like David Rubin, who made their entire careers about being against cancel culture and being for speech, now championing the idea that a bunch of Harvard students have their names on the side of a doxing truck or uh, a Berkeley professor is writing in the Wall Street Journal that no one should hire his law students because they are, quote, anti-Semitic for supporting Palestine. So I do wonder if there are limits to um, some of the ideals that are articulated by some folks on the top in certain contexts, but whether or not they're going to transform and whether the audience is really interested in a meaningful way, in kind of a movement-oriented way, in a, in a way that could actually help to create political pressure to free Julian Assange. Um, or whether it's a kind of a, a more decorative, hey, well, this is another free speechy sort of a thing that I'm. Well, doing. you want to talk about hypocrisies? Let's talk about you know the Biden administration's hypocrisy on this, purporting to stand for democracy, purporting to stand for free speech, yeah. and their Justice Department still you know seeking the extradition Absolutely. of Assange. Absolutely, Biden is very bad. Yeah, um, Spencer, mm -hmm. what what do you think Tucker's doing here? Yeah, I mean Tucker's somebody who to me just strikes me as somebody who's fundamentally curious about things in the world and interesting people especially uh, and so we've seen you know since he departed from fox news and has his own show now on x formerly twitter he's been doing interviews uh, as jessica alluded to in her comments with just very interesting people to sort of have a conversation and have that be publicly viewed and i i, I think this is no different you know he wants to go in and maybe 
maybe Assange will reveal something new or something different than what he's told other people or that he's told Tucker before. Uh, but I think Tucker just really likes talking to these people and getting their story and having people again here sort of with, uh, with now, especially less of a filter from any sort of media entity around him. And I, I, I think it, Obviously, it's working for him. He has a lot of viewers. He's doing well with the new show on X, Twitter, whatever we call it now. Um, but I, I, I think it's just kind of him having adventures and bringing his audience along for the ride. That's sort of what his show was like at Fox a lot of the time. You know, he had Michael Avenatti in his studio when he was at Fox to interview him, even though there's really, you know, there was no serious journalistic reason to necessarily have somebody like that commenting on the news of the day. He did it because he was an interesting person who a lot of people were trying to figure out what was going on with him. And the result was, you know, the best nickname that's maybe ever been put in a Chiron on a television show. And so I, I think this is going to be fun to watch. Uh, interesting, again, whether or not there's any new information, I don't think is necessarily the point. I think it's all about just having this conversation and having, having you know, two guys just talking about what their situation is and what the United States is doing. Uh, and I think, I mean, people will watch. Yeah, yeah. Be, so go ahead. No, I, I just think it's about keeping um, the situation alive, keeping it in the public consciousness. Um, we've interviewed um, Julian Assange's brother on this show a couple times. Um, you know, we get somewhat newsy updates about his condition, what he's going through. But, the, you know, the point really is to keep is to keep attention on the issue, is to create some kind of pressure on the administration to change tax. I mean, yes, when I've yeah, talked to yeah. people seeking a presidential pardon or a commutation, or, or people doing that on their behalf, yes. their ultimate goal is to have the issue be as salient in the news as possible. Right. But it's not a pressure campaign if there's no pressure. And so if this, this is the, the issue. I don't want to give Biden points. He doesn't deserve any. He obviously hasn't yeah. pardoned Assange. But there is a way that sometimes my observation is of the right media ecosystem that someone saying Assange, having Assange on, gets framed as the right is more invested in the freedom of Assange than the left is, when the left is not represented in the, the media sphere at all, the actual left. Biden is not the left. And I agree with every criticism of Biden. Not more here. so than the left, but more wait, so than the Democratic Party. But, yeah, again, the left is not the Democratic Party. That's, yeah. what, I, that's what I intended to just say there. But the, the problem is the actual left is trying to apply political pressure on anybody in power in office to actually free Assange. Now, what I would love to see from Tucker Carlson, if he uses this platform rightly, is to tell his audience, Donald Trump did not pardon Assange. Donald Trump, if you care about what this man that I'm talking to right now, who has been suffering the way that he is suffering for making some of the most important journalistic revelations of our generation, if you care about his fate and think that he is being unjustly imprisoned, you need to politically act with that energy. And that means putting pressure on Donald Trump and saying your vote is contingent for him or whatever other candidate you have of your choosing on him actually following through in this policy, not just patting oneself on the back and saying, yeah. oh, the right is right on this one. Aren't we better than the other side? So I right. just Googled it. I just looked it up. And Tucker on his show in 2021 um, called on, uh, uh, I guess this is before Trump had left off. It was calling on Trump in the final days in, in of his presidency. I remember that. To pardon Julian Assange. And the guest he had on to discuss this was Pamela Anderson. <laughs> so a friend, apparently a friend and supporter of Julian <laughs> and, Assange. And, and yet, here we are. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. No, I mean, no, there's no arguing that Trump didn't do it. He didn't do it. He totally whiffed on that. When I think about Assange, in this specific case, with Tucker Carlson having an interview with him, I don't think we can expect him to say, look at what's happened to you, you're in prison, this is horrible, you know, freedom of speech, blah, blah, blah. He will make that case, he'll, he might say those things, but the conclusion will not be this is bad, it shouldn't happen, and it happened because the United States has run foreign policy in the direction of ensuring that America is very rich, we have lots of profits for our multinational companies, and if that means that many people have to die in lands abroad, so be it. Right? Instead, I think Tucker Carlson is going to take this in the direction of, look at what your government is doing. Isn't that so bad? The government is so bad and evil. You should not give them any of your tax dollars. Taxes are so bad. All the while, Heck yeah. we're going to have the U.S. government continually authorizing hundreds of billions of dollars in defense spending, and none of it's going to need to come from tax revenue, because all that needs to happen is someone needs to press a button at the Fed and Treasury to issue the dollars. And so I really think that it's dangerous when you have someone like Tucker Carlson, who always does this thing of, like, very true premise, what happened to Julia Assange is bad, but a conclusion that makes no sense and doesn't address the problem at its mm -hmm. root whatsoever, because it will continue to happen. Mm. What do you make of this, Spencer? I mean, it's, I, I think Tucker is doing a good thing by interviewing people like this. I, I, 
thank you, Robbie, for noting that he called for this with Pamela Anderson on his show. That kind of goes to my earlier point about how he likes having interesting people on to just have honest conversations. Um, but I think, you know, it is just about sort of telling Assange's story and giving him an outlet to do that in a way that maybe he hasn't before, because maybe some other news outlets wouldn't necessarily have carried what he had to say or would have not let him say certain things. Um, I think in general, as Robbie was pointing out, a lot of this is about awareness and just making sure, you know, obviously there is a ton of stuff going on in the world right now that's demanding a lot of attention, specifically from the Biden administration. Uh, and so having a lot of people out there talking, whether it's on X or then bringing it up, you know, with their friends and their people in their office, things like that do actually end up moving the needle more so sometimes than just a direct call on Joe Biden because a moment in time can be ignored and he's got a lot on his plate right now and is probably uh, looking forward to another long weekend at the beach in Delaware anyway. But I think, you know, having sort of the, the grassroots of people on X, people on Twitter, being interested in this and wanting to see actual results. Again, like we said, Trump didn't do it. Biden hasn't done it yet. I think if anything is going to happen, it has to be sort of more of that grassroots thing to a point where it can't be ignored mm -hmm. because in day, time like this, there's plenty of other things that take all the attention and take all the oxygen out of the room. Whereas on Twitter, you have this opportunity with Tucker and his show to actually focus on it for a little bit longer than maybe just one single call or one protest at the White House. Mm. As far as I can tell, the last time MSNBC uh, talked about Julian Assange at all, I, obviously it, there could be something more recent than this, but Googling the last article is, Julian Assange extradition could mean even more legal trouble for Donald Trump. The WikiLeaks founder could say how much Trump knew about Russian election interference. They were salivating at the opportunity to, to get a, to question, uh, for the U.S. government to question Assange about Trump's alleged yeah, Russian culpability. I have no interest in defending MSNBC, but there are some people on MSNBC who who regularly um, call for the uh, free, freedom, free, freedom for Assange. Mehdi Hassan does so frequently. He did so most recently, in my recollection, on World Press, uh, Press Freedom Day back in May. We did a lengthy segment oh, on why Assange should That's be free. Great. So it, it is a mixed bag. It is a mixed bag. And I would say, again, affirmatively, that the people who have been agitating and working politically for him to be free are, I'm sorry, members of the political left. Um, and so I hope that there's something that's good, good, good that comes out of this for Assange. More eyes on this is important. Um, no, but I yeah, do, we don't need to divide it with left, right? Everybody should come together to put pressure to free Assange. Yeah. yeah, I think it's pretty telling that you have members of the left consistently, whether you want to look at the various media outlets that we have, independent news, democracy now, they have all been focused on the Julian Assange story for so long and consistently reporting on it, consistently yes. reporting on all of the updates. You don't see Ben Shapiro and the likes doing it. No. And so that's why I think Tucker Carlson being the touch point is dangerous because he's going to use this story as political fuel for his particular political perspective, which doesn't come to the solution that these kinds of war crimes committed by the U.S. military need to end, that this kind of foreign policy that's always operated in the direction of the U.S. extracting as much uh, resources from foreign countries as possible, exploiting labor as much as possible. That's typically the lens you get from Tucker Carlson and the likes. It was a, a, a change to have members of the left or members of the right now saying, maybe we shouldn't give money to the war in Ukraine. This change from neoconservatives to now this small anti-interventionist faction of the right, which is really showing their well, face look, now. Tucker in was part of that shift, right? I, it, I, I do want to give voice to the fact that I do think Fox News, frankly, is worse off mm. in terms of not having any voice that even will superficially nod to the idea mm. that there's two wings of this corporate-headed beast that's leading us on to, on to all of these foreign conflicts. I think that's right. But at the end of the day, I, I would like to see Tucker, maybe he'll start to do this more, especially now that he's away from Fox, I would like him pr to press the political levers to say, we have an open Republican field here. Are we going to get a competition among these candidates for who's willing to say, I want to free Julian Assange. We've, we had a little bit of that on the debate stage on the left back in 2020, with mm -hmm. people being asked the question, who here actually supports this? Are we going to get a moment like that on the right, where maybe one singular person, maybe Vivek, or Vivek Ramaswamy type, will stand up and say, yeah, I'm actually going to be consistent on these press freedom issues. I'm consistent on saying that Harvard kids shouldn't have to go to jail because they're a member of a club that supports uh, freedom for Palestinians. And I also support uh, press freedom and support Julian Assange. But it is incumbent, I, I totally agree with you, it is incumbent on Tucker Carlson to frame it that way and not just to try to kind of get bonus, bonus points by proxy by being close to a guy who a lot of people are very rightly invested in as a symbol of free speech in the United States of America and across the world. All right, Spencer, we'll give you the last word. 
<laughs> Thank you. It's my honor. Um, no, I, I think, you know, when it comes to, we've talked about it in an earlier segment today, this consistency or whether it's hypocrisy, you know, I do think there's a big difference between Tucker Carlson interviewing Julian Assange and calling for, you know, freedom for journalists just because they report things the government doesn't like and people on campuses who are not just saying, you know, we support freedom for Palestinians. They're actively um, convoluting that with supporting Hamas terrorists over there and waving Hamas flags and things like that. And so looking for a Republican or a moment on a debate stage where you're going to have people come out and say both that they think students who uh, support Hamas should face no consequences and neither should Julian Assange is something we're probably not going to see um, just because that's not the case on so many campuses. But I, I, I do think, again, going back to sort of what Jessica was talking about and something Robbie also mentioned, um, just the idea that uh, Tucker is going to be there and has the opportunity to do this is a big deal on Twitter because it's different from a lot of the other platforms that maybe he's had a chance to share his voice and his message on. And I think, again, even if Tucker, you know, has obviously tried back when he was on Fox News to call on Trump to issue a pardon or something like that, um, you know, he still has has the opportunity to issue that call again. You know, Trump is the front runner. He didn't do it the first time around, but he could do it this time around. And that might be something where, again, he could say, I'm going to change my policy because he hasn't done a lot of differentiating when it comes to what he did the first time around versus what he would do if reelected again this time. Mm. Well, you tell us, viewers, in the comments what you think about this, if you're excited to see Tucker Carlson talking to Julian Assange. And we'll be back with more Rising right after this.